Have you ever heard the song, Who Are the People in Your Neighborhood? This is actually a really important business question that a lot of people don't realize is a business question, especially a lot of small businesses. Big businesses, on the other hand, this is one of the most important questions that you can ask. It's so important, like I've said before, that a lot of big businesses will not even make an offer on a piece of land until they know who's in the neighborhood. Why? Because they want to know if they put a project or a business into a particular neighborhood, are there going to be customers with enough money who can support that business? Or is that business just going to eventually die? That's why this question is so important. Currently, I'm in the middle of a 30-day YouTube challenge where I try to post a video on YouTube every single day. Today is day 12. And yesterday, I started a new series about who is your customer. Yesterday, I talked to you about how your product dictates who your customer is going to be. And today, I want to talk to you about who actually lives in your area. This is especially important for retail businesses and restaurants, and also for businesses that have a service industry. If you are an online business, that's a different video that I'll do later in the week. But this business in particular is going to help you find out who's in your neighborhood so that you can target them better and you don't waste your time trying to market to people that aren't going to come to your business. Now, the first thing that I would do whenever I do a market financial feasibility research report is I get a location from the customer. Sometimes we get multiple locations because they're thinking of different places where they would open their business. And we would go and we would pull the demographics for that area. Now, as a professional, we go and we use Environics Analytics, which is a really good company. It's been around for a really long time. They used to be Nielsen and they became Environics Analytics. The ironic thing is that they're in Canada, but they have all of the stats on American customers. And so we go to them because usually the census is about a full year behind on the numbers that I'm about to show you. And Environics will use their advanced formulas to try to analyze and project what the numbers are for this year and for the future. The census will also do stuff like that. But Environics has a very advanced formula, very advanced information. I don't even know where they get all their information, but it costs hundreds of dollars, and I promised you that we would do this for free. If I were to do it for free for somebody, I would go to the United States Census. Most specifically, I would go to this website right here, data.census.gov forward slash advanced. Now, this site is actually one of those behind the scenes sites, because if you went to census.gov, you would actually be on a different site. So this is their subsite where they keep all of their data. There are millions, even billions of pieces of information there, which means it can be kind of slow at times. For now, if I were to come in here, you could see over here all of the different topics that you have. I would generally start with the smallest tract possible. I would start with either a block or a census tract. And then I would download the information. I would upload it into MapPoint 2013, which is a very old program. I'm going to show you how to do all of that tomorrow. I would use map point 2013 to map the census tract information or the block information and find out actually who is within a smaller area. However, you might not want to get the mapping software. You might want to just know who's in your town. If you do, you can click on place and you can generally just actually name your city. And that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to do a city one. But let's say you're in the service industry and you want to find out where the money's at because you want to actually take your business to that area. Maybe you don't want to work near your house. The zip code would be a better place for you to look because that will break down your area a little bit better. And it will give you an idea of if you want to target certain areas, like where the money is in your area. I'm going to use that information as well tomorrow and upload it into the map point and show you how that colors out. So that way you can use that information. But I want to keep this video short today. To best estimate who your customer is going to be. They're generally within 10 miles of your location. That's simply because a lot of times there's so much competition within a 10 mile radius that most people don't have to drive more than 10 miles or 10 minutes in order to get the stuff that they want. For now, we're just going to do place. I'm going to start with Chicago, Illinois. It's a huge place to go, but because it's a big city, it's generally more updated in the census than you might find somewhere else. So Chicago. And you see that I have all of these different Chicagos. I could click multiples and then all of those would be on the same table. However, I'm trying to keep this short. So I'm just gonna click Chicago and I'm gonna hit search. Now, one of the nice things that they do over here is they do this nice little profile for you. And you can see the blue line here. This is the specific area of Chicago that they are talking about. Now, if you were to click view profile, you can go in and you can see more in-depth information. Now, all of this would generally be the most up-to-date information. This says 2023 community survey one-year estimates. This one is from 2022 five-year estimates table. And you can see all of the general stats as you just scroll down here, what the older population is, residential, veterans, 
income and poverty. Median household income in Chicago City is 74000 but the median household income in Illinois is 80000 They're a little bit less than the rest of the state, but it's still fairly good when you compare it to the United States. Here's the median income by types of families. you got families, married couples, non-family households, you got the poverty level, the different age ranges. Under 18, so about 24% of the people living in downtown Chicago are under the age of 18, meaning that they likely live with their parents. You can see the education, bachelor's degree, high school, college, associates. As it's loading right here, you can see along the top, housing, health, families, living arrangements. All of this stuff, you can just grab. All of these tables are already done for you. You can just clip the screenshots, throw it into your business plan, and start looking at who's in your area. How much money do they have? Do they have kids? Do they not have kids? This is just the generalized stuff for your city. And like I said, tomorrow I'm going to show you how to break this down by block. But here's the industries that are in your area, and maybe one of these is you. We pretty much recreate all of these tables with the information that we get from Environics, but here it is for free. You don't have to pay for this. Here's the housing, median gross rent in Chicago versus Illinois. Here's occupied units by paying rent. Here's home ownership rates. Here's housing values. This is always good to know. Most of the houses in this area are between three hundred to $500,000. The houses in downtown Chicago are incredibly expensive, and even these cheaper ones, have super, super high HOAs. Owner, renter, household characteristics, physical characteristics of the houses. You have the health, disabilities, types of disabilities. You've got children by age range under five, five to 14, 15 to 17. Obviously, this is preschool. This would be elementary school to junior high. This would be high school. Average family size in Chicago versus the state. Types of households you've got. Marital status by sex. And then the last group over here you can see is race and ethnicity. So we got the American Indians, Asians, they're actually giving you numbers. And these are hard numbers, but you might want to know what the percentages are. So if you want to know what percentages are, we're going to go back to the tables. I like the ACS demographic and housing estimates table because here's the city, city of Chicago and Illinois. If you click multiple cities, it's going to just run right along the top. You've got your estimates and your margin of error. You've got the percentages. And then when you come over, margin of error again. What you would do is you can just go down this list. Look at that. How many are male and female? Roughly 49% versus 52% male versus female. Here's all your ages by group. And you can see the percentages. The largest percentage in downtown Chicago is between the ages of 25 to 34. Here's the under 18 year olds, 18.9%. That's still less than the 25 to 34 year olds. Here's the people that are retired, 65 and over, 14.4%. As you scroll down, here's the races. This is a 2023 table which is basically the same as what the other one said. I was trying to say that the other table is a little bit more updated because it's actually their map. So it's probably closer to 2024 information, but 2024 is not done yet. And you're going to find as you go through this website, you're going to see a lot of tables where sometimes the numbers aren't exactly the same. And that's generally from my experience that they will make a set of tables and they will do projections for what they believe the year is based on their percentages and their algorithms. Then the following year, when they get the final counts in, they will, instead of going back and updating previous information, they will just create completely new tables. So when they create completely new tables, now you have all of these different tables and then the numbers seem different and you start to go, which one should I listen to? I always play it safe by going with the lower numbers. If you go above and then you don't get the numbers that you expect, you're going to be disappointed. It's safest to just kind of underestimate what you're going to do. That way, anything that you make above that any extra people that you bring in is just going to be a bonus. It said 2.7 million on the other one, but this one says 2.664 million. And this would have been 2023 for sure. Whereas that one is estimating 2024 based off the 2023 tables. Does that make sense? So out of the 2.66 million people that this table says live in downtown Chicago, 2.28 of them identify as one race only, which I think is kind of interesting. Then here are the races. White, you got just under a million. Black, you've got almost three quarters of a million. Af American Indian, you have 31,000 roughly. Asians, 205,000. You've got all the different types. And these, all of these numbers would add up to that one. But it looks like they're not actually identifying it. Native Hawaiian and other Pacific. Again, you've got some numbers broken down here. Then you get into the two or more races. So white and black or African-American or Indian, Asian. Like here's some of the different mixes, which I think is very interesting. This might apply to your business. Then you have race alone or in combination with one or more. So these are the people that identify as Hispanic or not Hispanic. Then two or more races, including some other race. That's one of the tables that I like to pull. After I pull this ACS demographic and housing estimates, giving me the ages, the sex, and the race, then I will go back by clicking on filters and I will come down. Let's hide the geographies. 
and I will check out income next. I would try to see what's the income in the area. Generally, I look for something like mean income or median income just because that gives you more estimated numbers. You want to know, do the people in your neighborhood actually have the money? I'm going to click the little arrow and there's the table. This is the median income in the past 12 months. See, some will make a lot of money in that area. Look at that white alone. They're making almost half a million dollars a year down there. Whereas the American Indians are making under $11,000. And you can kind of see which groups are, are the richer groups here. Household income by age of householder. So here you got the different ages and you can see the most people making the most money are between 25 to 44 years old. You got your families and you keep going down, non-family households, you can see all the different incomes. This is going to give you an idea of who's got the money in your neighborhood out of the 1.179 million households. It's going to help you figure out who you want to target. Because obviously an American Indian and Alaska Native who's making $11,000 a year, they're probably not going to be able to afford to buy your products. Whereas somebody who's making $450,000 a year, you're probably going to get a lot of sales from them if you actually target them and you make it interesting to them. Can you see how I would say that knowing what the race is is going to help you kind of target just a little bit better? Because what applies to each of the cultures is a little bit different. What interests white customers can often be different than what interests black customers or Asian customers or native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander customers. These are the kind of things you want to know. I'm going to go back to the population table. When you're in the population table like this, you can click transpose. And when you click transpose, what it's going to do is it's going to put your headings across the top like that. And you're going to have your estimates and margins here. I don't like to do that. I'm going to transpose it the other way. I also don't like my margin of error in, so I'm going to click this to take that out. And this is a perfectly good table that I want. So I'm going to click on more tools over here, which if you extended this all the way out, instead of seeing more tools, you would actually see all of the options. But since I'm recording this in a smaller screen, I'm going to click more tools and I'm going to click Excel. And now it just downloaded this into an Excel table for me. When I open it, now I'm in the table and here's all my categories. Now I can manipulate this data however I want. And I'm going to take as much of this data as I can. I'm going to put it in Excel tables. I'm going to run numbers. I'm going to crunch all kinds of things. And I'm going to try to figure out who my perfect customer is. I'm going to use that to my advantage. That's what I wanted to show you today to find out who are the customers in your actual neighborhood. Keep in mind, these are just the residences. You can find out all kinds of things from the census, including what business they're in, race, income, education, all of it. Anything that you want to know about them, you can generally find there, including purchasing habits. Tomorrow, I'm going to show you how to break that down block by block. If you find something you like, download it into an Excel table, hold on to it. I would definitely say download it into a census tract or a block tract for tomorrow. So that way, if you want to go along with me and map out who's actually within your 10 mile radius, your 25 mile radius, your 50 mile radius, whatever radius you want to know your customers might be in, I'm going to show you how to do that tomorrow. Even if you only want to do a one mile radius around your business. Thank you guys for watching. If you like it, please hit that like button. Also, if you have any questions for me, please put them in the comments below. I do answer questions within the first 24 hours of any video going live, which means if this video is more than 24 hours old, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that when the next video comes out, you can pop over to that one and ask me questions about this video. Just make sure you reference this video so I know what you're talking about, and then I'd be happy to answer you. Otherwise, when I get the comments for this video, it'll come to me in my email, and I will gather them up and then try to make videos to answer those questions, which means it could take longer. So if you want to talk to me sooner, Hit the subscribe and notification bell. Thank you guys for watching. See you in tomorrow's video when we map out where your customers are at.